You're listening to episode 29 of Leaders on Purpose podcast. Hi there. Welcome to Leaders on Purpose podcast. This is your host, Manal Bernoussi. I am a multi-passionate mom of twins and a corporate executive in Casablanca, Morocco, living and sharing my personal development journey. In this podcast, we're looking to develop the skills, habits, and mindset to reveal our full potential for a greater purpose. I'll be inviting inspiring people, beautiful souls, Moroccans, Canadians, Americans, Nigerians, and more, people from all backgrounds and different nationalities to inspire us to live our true purpose and create great impact. So join me every other Sunday and let's make this happen. Hey everyone and welcome back to Leaders on Purpose podcast. This is Manel speaking. I'm so glad to finally sit with you today. I have been a little under the weather these past days. So if my voice sounds different to you, it's because I'm still fighting a cold. But yeah, this episode is a very special one for me. We'll be talking about the quantum leap, the leap of faith, going from a comfortable corporate position to starting your own business. So in the past two episodes, I'll link them both for you in the show notes if you want to go and check them out. I shared that my intention for this new year is new beginnings, starting with a clean slate, you know. That's like the overall direction and intention I wanted for the upcoming year. And what we'll be talking about today is certainly an expression of that intention. If we're connected on social media, either LinkedIn or Instagram, you probably saw me announce that after over 12 years at a major financial institution and 18 years overall in the corporate world, I decided it was time for me to change paths and start my own company. Although I had a safe, uncomfortable situation, I knew deep inside it was time for me to honor that inner voice that has always been calling me to take a leap of faith and start my own business. So my intention in sharing with you my thought process today is that it will probably support you in your own journey and hopefully help you get through some of those questions that inevitably come with such big decisions. Just before we dive in, I want to take a moment to honor you and express my deepest appreciation. The wave of support and the heartfelt messages that I have been receiving these past days. It touches my heart to see how many of us relate to these life decisions. And it is truly a blessing to feel supported in such defining times. So, Radia, Peter, Jérôme... Ivan, Fedwa, Aigul, Tina, wish I could name each and every one of you wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much for reaching out and for extending your beautiful energy. I truly, truly appreciate you. So as the starting point, you're probably a corporate executive. You worked hard to earn your spot and climb the corporate ladder you have a successful career, a successful job, you have a seat at the table, you got the recognition, the accolades, you're invited to events and all that. And yet somehow, you feel that's not the end game. You feel there's something else for you out there, another level of fulfillment. You feel that your mind, body and soul are out of alignment. You're happy with your situation and everything. You're grateful to provide a comfortable living for your family. But deep inside, you know. <laughs> There's that inner voice that shows up once in a while and is trying to tell you, but you keep pushing it away, right? Deep inside, you know, and you're asking yourself, is this the kind of life I truly want? Is this the version of me that I want to experiment for the rest of my life? Am I expressing the fullest, truest, most authentic version of myself? Fast forward where you are right now. Look at yourself in 10, 15, 20 years time and ask yourself this question. Is that where I want to be? 
Look at the person who's 10 or 20 years ahead of you and ask yourself, is that who I want to be? And be true to yourself, because the first and the most difficult risk we can take is to be honest with ourselves. Ask yourself that question, and if the answer is no, then you need to find a new path. Like right now. Set an intention, start thinking about it. You owe that to yourself. Showing up for yourself is a form of self-care and self-respect also. Now I know it's not an easy decision. Of course it's not. To leave a job where you get the safety of a salary each month, the benefits, the corner view office and everything that comes with it, to potentially having none of that literally the month after is like a big deal. Of course it's a big deal. But at the same time, there is no easy way around it. There is no shortcut or quick fix. You have to be willing to take a risk and potentially start from the bottom up. And I'm not saying it's a path for everyone. I certainly do not think entrepreneurship is meant for everyone. There is no one-size-fits-all approach. If you're happy with your current situation, that's perfect. That's all that matters. You and only you know what is right for yourself. Not people expectations, not social norms, only you. But if you feel out of alignment and you want to build the life and the lifestyle that you truly want, not being bound by golden handcuffs, if there's something that you love and you want to make a living out of it, if you want to reclaim your own freedom, if you're looking for more flexibility, to be more present for your family, to be your own boss, whatever it is for you, then this is a decision that you will have to make sooner or later. Giving ourselves the permission to be courageous, to be bold, to be big, that's what makes the difference. When we get out of our own way, And you know, the thing that a lot of us get hung up on, and I've been there, believe me, is that we crave so much certainty. And we're like hardwired for it in certain ways. We crave the certainty before taking any action. The reason why people don't just be courageous and bold, it's because they're waiting and waiting and waiting. And ultimately, opportunities pass them by. They are just waiting for that certain moment. We're waiting for that perfect moment where everything is just green lights all the way down. And it's like, okay, now it's the right time to go. Now it's safe to go. And this idea of safety, when you think about it, it's like parenthood. I'm a, I'm a parent. I'm a mom of twins. We just celebrated their birthday last weekend. And there are moments where I'm like genuinely concerned. Like actually, during their birthday, we took them with their friends to this place where they can go tree climbing. It's one of those high rope parks, you know. And my daughter was really upset because she wanted to take the blue lane, which is more challenging and scarier than the yellow lane that all her friends were taking. But because she met the height requirements, she's taller than the average the, the group average of her age. Lilia was really expecting to go for the bigger kids lane. And that really made her upset. Now, to be honest, my first reaction was to try and convince her to go for the yellow lane. I was just worried it was too steep for her. I thought she was way too young for that zip line. And I just saw it going really, really bad in my mind. But then I catched myself and made a conscious choice to just let it go and support her in her decision. After all, she did meet the height requirements. She was tall enough for the blue lane. She was right about that. And now she says that's the best part and the best memory from her birthday. So there is also this element of like, hey, this anxiousness and this desire for safety that we have actually takes away some of the adventure if we let that part be overexpressed. 
Usually, as parents, we go through the entire house, cleaning out this perfect little area. We baby-proof it and we have like these rules. You can go here, you can go there, and we make it really, really safe. But it robs them of the opportunity to make mistakes and learn. And I look at the journey of being a business owner just like that. We gotta try things out. Will it be easy? Nope. Worth it? Absolutely. I expect to make mistakes. I already started, in fact. And that's where the biggest gifts are. Because if we don't make mistakes, we don't build an awareness of who we are in these difficult situations. Like, who are you when things get tough? Who are you when your vision isn't clear? Who are you when your experience does not match your expectations? Who are you when you run out of resources or you don't have enough resources? How do you handle all that stuff? It's a great way to get to know yourself. Life is a learning journey and you will never, ever know what you need unless you know who you are. Like I said, we want that certainty before taking any actions. The reality is there is no certainty. I will not know unless I try. You cannot walk until you fall. So literally, you have to go out there and go, I do not know if this is going to work. I have no certainty on it. But let me just go ahead and try out all these ideas I have in mind. Because if I don't try, I'll never know. And for me, there is nothing, like absolutely nothing I can think of worse than looking back one day and being like, what if I had listened to that inner voice? What if I had the courage to trust myself and go for it? So staying in the box, playing it safe our entire life. And safety is like what most people will try to get you do. But the safe bit is robbing us from the adventure of really getting what we want. And in fact, I truly believe if you play it safe your entire life, you stand no chance in getting what you want and making a huge impact and really making a meaningful and authentic difference. At some point, no matter the path you choose for yourself, you'll be faced with situations where you'll have to take some sort of risk. But most of us don't. Why? Because of those golden handcuffs. They're real. We get stuck in that bubble of comfort. We are so dependent on that salary, the money that we've got used to, the lifestyle, that we're willing to trade what we really love and want for what we think we need. But let me ask you this. What if there's a possibility to start something with no risk at all? And you were guaranteed to be successful in it. What would you do? What if you would quit your job, not today, but soon? Or if you didn't even need to quit your job, but you could use your time on your evenings to do what you love, to use your weekends to build that side hustle? All I'm saying is, you can start doing what you love today, in your spare time, on your weekends, and get better at it. And later on, find a way to get paid for it. Because that's what's going to help you create the life that you truly, truly want. So before I wrap up, I'll share with you three tips that help me take the big leap. Number one, start a side hustle. Maybe it's an online business, maybe it's a blog, maybe it's a YouTube channel, whatever it may be. Get that side hustle going. Start learning about it quickly. Speak to people who made it happen in their lives. Number two, connect and network with the right people. Go to events, take online courses, get inspired, invest in yourself. There is so much access out there to knowledge. Explore and be curious. Experiment and test again and again. And be consistent. Whatever you choose, consistency is key. Number three, surround yourself with the right people. 
people who you trust and have your best interests at heart. It can be your spouse, your partner in life, your closest friend or a business coach, a mentor. Surround yourself with people who are going to lift you higher. That is so important. Don't think you can do it alone. Get your support system around you and expect to go through so many emotions. Because some people get stuck in this mindset of, well, if I should be doing this, I shouldn't be afraid. I should feel 100% sure about it. Well, that is just BS, okay? Of course you'll get terrified when facing such a huge decision. The fear does not go away. It's part of the deal. What actually happens is you feel the fear and do it anyways. That's it. It's like, am I going to listen to the fear or am I going to listen to the deepest truth, the deepest passion that's within me? Also, I do not believe you need to wait to have it all figured out. The idea is finding the thing that you're good enough at, that you can learn the game, and once you start taking the steps, the next steps become illuminated. Trying to think 100 steps in the future when you have no context is irrelevant because life happens and chaos is going to break the plan. There's this quote that I read the other day and it really hit home and it goes, if you risk nothing in your life, you actually are risking everything. And I love this quote because it speaks to if you're risking nothing, if you're staying in your comfort zone, you're actually risking your biggest possibilities. You're actually risking your highest potential. So ultimately, when it, what it comes down to, and I'll leave you with that, is fear is a choice. We can fantasize about the fears actually happening and put our mind and body through that. Or we can fantasize about actually succeeding and our business doing well. Also, let's ask ourselves more empowering questions instead of going, what if I fail? What if I made the wrong choice? Well, what if I succeed? What if everything goes right? What if we become massively successful and influential and help the world change and change our children's life, right? Let's think about that. Is there a possibility for all of the opposite of the things that we fear to happen? Yes, absolutely. Well, how would we show up if we believe deep down in our soul that everything good that could happen to us will happen to us? How would you show up differently versus believing that all the bad things will happen? What could be possible when you show up that way? So yeah, Those were the kind of thoughts that were going through my mind these past weeks. And I was like, you know what? I feel the fear. I do. It does not feel good, but I'm going to step into this unknown anyways. Because I know that my greatest potential, my greatest life, the life for my family, my contribution to the world, the impact that I can have is on the other side of fear. What I know for sure, as Lady Oprah says... What I know for sure is no matter what the challenges or setbacks or the disappointments that we may encounter along the way, true success and happiness are found if we have only one goal. There really is only one goal. And that is to fulfill the highest, most truthful expression of yourself as a human being. You want to use your energy to lift yourself up, your family, and the people around you. And Howard Thurman said it best, and he said, Don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive, and then go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. So that's what I've got for you for today. I hope that some of this resonated with you, that some of it supports you in your own journey to finding your passion, to living your purpose, to tapping into that inner voice of yours. Again, thank you so much for all the love and support. It means the world to me. I feel we're on this journey together, a journey of growth and self-discovery. 
and I'm just ready to experience it all, the highs, the lows, the lessons, and just see how life unfolds. So if there's anything from this episode that resonated with you, share it, absorb it, pass it on. Thank you so much. That is it. Thank you so much for spending your most precious asset with me, which is your time. I am so grateful. If you like what you hear, please take a quick second to hit subscribe, write a review, and share with a friend. Spread the love if you think it's something they could benefit from. That will make a huge difference to keep this podcast going. I make it my mission to bring you as much valuable content as possible and absolutely incredible guests. I am back every other Sunday. Thank you so much again for listening, and I hope you have an amazing day.